we're back and we're going to be talking about diseases that can affect the brain and therefore cognition. All right, so let's start with sort of discriminating between um, delirium, which is gonna be temporary, oftentimes due to medical states, psychological states, drug use, and can happen at any age. It is more common among the elderly, but it can happen at any age. Versus dementia, which is irreversible, it's due to some kind of organic brain damage or disease, and it's much more likely with advanced age. Very uncommon in younger people. So let's start off by talking about delirium in more detail. Delirium is gonna be due to a number of different possible factors. There are a lot of different things that can cause delirium. One is polypharmacy. This is where you're having some kind of drug interaction. Um, there are uh, certain drugs that will either interact with an individual and cause delirium just by that drug by itself. Other drugs that once you've combined a couple of them will cause delirium, where the person is confused, um, they are um, sometimes scared, sometimes overly emotional, um, and that could be due to drug interactions. It could be due to mal malnutrition. You know, um, elderly people are really likely to um, encounter malnutrition because they, uh, oftentimes when they're by themselves, don't see the point in wasting their time making a meal and other kinds of things. I'll just eat the leftovers from lunch. And next thing you know, they're eating the same foods repetitively and not getting enough uh, variety, or they're eating in too small of amounts. Maybe they can't afford enough food or, or something like that. And, or they're just being a little bit neglectful. They say, well, I'm not feeling hungry. And the truth is that they, their body needs food, but they aren't reacting to the, to the cues adequately. So malnutrition can cause delirium in anybody of any age. Um, dehydration, another thing. Um, again, dehydration can happen in anybody, but uh, it's elderly patients or elderly people are, are more likely to experience dehydration. Everything as we age in our bodies becomes less efficient and uh, more, uh, more likely to show the effects of whatever the, the thing is. And so a lack of water in a 20-year-old is something that their body, well, it'll just release the water from the cells and um, they can go a little longer. Their kidneys are not gonna necessarily be damaged from it. As we age, you can't really sweat as much. You, can't, you don't have as many reserves in your cells to be releasing that much fluid. Um, your kidneys aren't as efficient and so you can get the effects of dehydration faster brain tumors. Um, there are tumors that can occur in the brain that can be pressing on certain areas that can cause um, the confusion and um, emotionality that we see with delirium. And then physical illnesses. Um, this is a nice whiteboard chart I found on um, you know, the relationship between different kinds of things like cancer or um, having had surgery recently or other kinds of things that can trigger delirium. But the th thing to remember about all five of these causes is that they are all things that are temporary in the form of once we reverse this this condition you should theoretically go back to normal the delirium will pass that's different from dementia and the one that we all think about you know as the big scary one is alzheimer's disease our textbook has started calling it alzheimer disease but all my graphics say alzheimer's so i'm calling it alzheimer's um, the person who found it was named alzheimer's so it's not um it's not that he had the disease, like Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, this is uh, the doctor who found it, and so it, it was named after him. Symptoms of Alzheimer's disease would be a gradual deterioration of memory, for one thing. Um, an older person with Alzheimer's might think they're back when they were younger, that they literally don't remember the last 40 years of their lives. Um, they may not recognize their, their spouse or their own kids. Um, and then their Personality may be altered. Um, as the disease progresses, you may find a person becoming much more childlike in their behavior, um, or more emotional in their behavior, um, more giddy, more prone to crying, those kinds of things. And the other symptom is something that can really, at this point, be diagnosed after death with a, um, an autopsy. And what they look for is the formation of the plaques, which you see in, the, in this picture, um, you see the amyloid plaques, and then the tangles of tau proteins that are inside the neuron. They get all tangled up and make it difficult for the neurons to communicate with their neighbors. So you get these um, 
plaques and tangles that are our classic diagnostic criteria for the presence of Alzheimer's. So brain changes that we see in people with Alzheimer's. Um, one way that we can see, well, we can um, diagnose Alzheimer's earlier is to do this kind of PET scan where we look to see um, what kinds of activity are, are present in the person's brain. The person on the right is a person who has a normally functioning brain. The person on the left is a person who has Alzheimer's and is progressed. The person in the middle is a person who is not showing any symptoms of Alzheimer's, but their brain scan is showing evidence that they have amyloid proteins in their brain. Um, so you're seeing a lot more activity in the Alzheimer and the, and the person with amyloid positive. Um, remember, hotter colors in a PET scan mean more activity. And so uh, sometimes people think, well, that's kind of weird. I thought their brain was deteriorating. Well, actually it is, and that's why more areas of the brain are being um, you know, marshaled in order to do a particular task in a person who's uh, got Alzheimer's or is on their way to it. Here's another um, picture that shows you, well, if you wait long enough, here we have an advanced Alzheimer's patient. You see what you probably would expect in a person with Alzheimer's. Um, see how you're starting to get low levels of activity, but you'll notice it's not low levels of activity on the person on the right. It's actually those black spaces are areas where their brain has actually atrophied. So it's not that they have less activity, it's that they've got less brain matter. So that's another way that we can kind of, um, you know, assume that it's probably due to Alzheimer's until death when we could actually do an autopsy and, and establish the presence of the plaques and the tangles. So, Early stages of Alzheimer's. Behaviorally, we would expect to see forgetfulness. Um, loss of verbal fluency. You'll notice a person um, really stretching for a word that they're familiar with. Uh, you know, uh, I saw a guy who had early stages of Alzheimer's, and they were testing him because they thought maybe he had it, and he was saying, um, they showed him a picture, and he goes, oh, yeah, that's a really neat animal. That's, I can't think of its name. It's the one with the, it's got a horn on his nose, and lives in Africa, like he knew all the things about the animal, but he could not come up with rhinoceros to save his life. I mean, he just literally could not think of the name. And so finally, when the test administrator provided it, he's like, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, I couldn't think of it. That's what we mean by loss of verbal fluency. They're having difficulty finding words that they're familiar with. The personality changes that I mentioned, we might see immaturity. We might see, um, you know, laughing at, at times that aren't appropriate or crying at times that aren't appropriate. Um, they're... The thing about Alzheimer's is that you may see times where the person in the early stages seems like maybe that was temporary and they seem better now, but that's a function of their, their brain compensating those losses. And that can happen for a while. You can kind of have a compensation, you'll see a change again, and then a compensation, and then pretty much the um, brain will lose its ability to compensate because too many areas are being damaged. Um, memory loss can become da dangerous for people with Alzheimer's because they may forget where they what the normal route is to get to their house and they can become lost. Um, you may have seen silver alerts where you have a person who's elderly and is known to have memory deficits and we're all on the lookout for their car because they haven't come home when they should have and they might be lost. Um, there have been cases of, of people with early stages of Alzheimer's they hadn't been diagnosed who you know literally drove off of boat docks into a lake because they were unaware that this wasn't a road and that all the signs of roadness were not present and they just drove right off of it. Um, so in, this early, in these early stages, the fact that they don't remember um, things can make it really dangerous. In the final stages, uh, typically you're going to have a need for full-time care because we're having a, a loss of basic skills. So difficulty caring for oneself, um, feeding, toileting, things like that. They, they are unable to do those things anymore. They may stop talking altogether. That's a really common you know, um, factor in the last couple of years. Um, for the per average person, from diagnosis, you know, from the recognition that these symptoms are probably um, consistent with Alzheimer's to death, is usually about 10 to 15 years. Um, it's, that's a pretty typical average age. So it's, it's not a quick disease at all and it's kind of heartbreaking because like I said they may have stabilization or improvements and so you think well maybe they're getting better maybe the drugs that they've been taking are working or something 
right now we have no cure for Alzheimer's. It is a progressive disease. Um, other causes of de dementia could be things like vascular causes, like multi-embarked dementia, where a person's had a stroke. And so you get temporary blockages of blood vessels in the brain. And those blockages cause uh, nerve cells to actually die. Neurons will die off. Um, so here we have the comparison of, of how things go for a person with uh, multi-infarct dementia and versus a person who has Alzheimer's. So the red line is multi-infarct. And what you'll see is they'll have this drop in functioning after following uh, a stroke. And then they'll oftentimes with rehabilitation, things like that, get mostly better. And then they have another stroke. And then with rehabilitation, they get mostly better. So it's like they're getting worse every time, but it's not that straight line of basically going from, you know, I had been functioning fine to now I'm not functioning well at all, like you see in Alzheimer's. And with a multi-infarct, there are now medications and things like that, so that if you have one blockage of blood vessels, they may be able to prevent another one. So uh, it is not necessarily a guarantee that a person with multi-infarct dementia will, will progress, like it is a guarantee that a person with Alzheimer's will. The last one I wanted to talk about was Parkinson's disease. And there's a new medication on the market for Parkinson's, so it may be on the forefront of your mind these days because you might have seen the ad. Um, all this, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Parkinson's, um, the main symptoms, I found this picture that I thought was a, a really helpful one because it you'll notice it's a sort of entire body kind of uh, disease where you see the person um, moving differently. It's generally diagnosed as a um, disease of gait, um, G-A-I-T, where you're having difficulty with movement. And so the extremities tremble, the person shuffles, um, they really can't pick their feet up in a typical way. Um, they may have difficulty reaching and grasping. Um, and then you'll notice these other postural things and facial things that go along with Parkinson's. Um, what we're concerned with is the dementia part of it, where the person has um, changes in their um, thinking. Uh, it, they may even have hallucinations, see things that aren't really there, uh, things like that, and cognitive deficits that go along with, with Parkinson's. Now, it, the cause of Parkinson's is this little area, they've highlighted it in blue here in this picture, um, that's down on the brain stem called the substantia nigra. And it produces dopamine and sends dopamine up to higher order parts of the brain, including um, a, another part of the brain stem, which is the cerebellum, which controls the voluntary movements, the smooth movements that we want to do. So as the substantia nigra dies off, in this disease, it stops sending the dopamine up and that causes the parts of the brain above it to start dying off. And so you get an increase, increase, increase in the symptoms. So Parkinson's disease is, like I said, generally thought of as emotion, uh, not dementia, but because a lot of people don't understand what Parkinson's is, um, there are these cognitive deficits that go along with it as well. All right, well, that's enough of that. I will see you guys next time in my lecture on uh, social development. In late adulthood.